Ahnung. Ist voll? Ja. Hier und hier. Record. Bam. Record. And we're live. We are live. Hell yeah. Put, put your phone down this right now, this Sorry. second. Cool. Um, we're live? Yeah, we're live. Welcome, Welcome back. Up. Sunday sit down. Round four. This is episode, episode four. Well, three. on Spotify, this is episode three. And. Is it? Yeah, on Spotify. On Spotify, I mean, this, so this will be episode three. Are you sure? Wait, okay. So. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Because zero, one, two. This be okay. I don't know. This is an episode. Fuck it. We're talking. Sunday sit down. Sponsored by, not actually. Bang Energy. He's, a, he's a whore for energy drinks. So he switches it up every time. I am. I normally like anybody knows me. I don't like Bang, but this new Key Lime Pie flavor is actually not bad. It's, but we got Miami Cola too. So we'll see how it tastes. Miami Cola tastes terrible. Does it really? It tastes like a uh, flat Coke. That's what ah. left outside for a bit. But it also has caffeine and zero calories, so can't complain. Okay, so we got some interesting topics today. First, I'm going to start with a very easy one. I think I'm going to do the, uh, the idle question, you know? Oh, okay. Okay. So we're going to cover a few topics to see what time permits. So one of the first topics we want to cover is idols in the fitness industry. So before we go on, let's change the word idol because we're not going to... It's kind of weird to say, like, I idolize somebody. I guess somebody, let's say, like, someone I look up to. Respect. Respect. That motivates me. Yeah. Idol, idolize seems very kind of, I don't know, there's so many false people in the industry, so I don't want to say, like, I understand. I, you that. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So people that we look up to motivate. So I guess we'll go back and forth. So give me give me one of yours. So er, so everybody knows me. I'm a big fan of Steffi Cohen. Why? Because, dude, I don't know. She's out here doing it, man. Like, I listen to a What's lot of I listen to a lot of her podcasts and everything. She talks about like everything she's done. Like she's done like, Olympic weightlifting, uh, powerlifting. She's doing boxing now. Like she, she's very determined to whatever she's doing. She's also a doctor of physical therapy. Or, doctor of physical therapy, which is like, one of the things I want to do. She has her own gym. Very successful. Has different forms of income. She's a businesswoman and a world-known lifter. And it's just she's. From what I've seen, she's doing everything on a pretty high level, and she's she takes care of herself pretty well. There's nothing really bad you hear about Steffi Cohen. Like you don't hear her getting into any arguments. She's funny too. Yeah, she's she's a funny gal, and she's from my, Miami, where I'm from. So, three hundred five, baby. Three hundred five. Let's go. <laughs> um, I got a few too, but I I guess I'm gonna break it up into um different categories. We'll say first one to be more business based. Okay. I guess the second one would be actual like lifting bodybuilding shit you know yeah so i think business based first one i like christian guzman okay the alpha elite because he's done so much too he's done alpha elite alpha elite gym 3ds my favorite energy drink that is your favorite energy drink i love the clothes they're nice quality they're kind of tight and a little bigger but maybe should maybe he needs to make them a little bigger for me but but make, make like a big boy brand well i got i got in tall i got a 2x but it was so like you did get that to me yeah Wait till I lean down. I'll just. Okay. But I like that guy too. I love his YouTube videos too. So, that's one. Well, I guess I'll get. I'll cover two then. Yeah, okay. you do yours too, and I'll do my next one. One of his other best friends, Max Tuning. I hope I don't mispronounce that. It's, yeah, I think it's Tuning. Yeah. Tuning. Same kind of thing. Love the YouTube videos. Love sour strips. Sour strips are fucking good. I feel like most of your idols have to deal with food. No, Christian. Does, well, what well, is? energy drink some but, sort of intake but it's still cool because like if you can like they started doing like youtube videos and working out and you eventually expand to like energy drinks and candy that's kind of cool imagine going from like posting like videos of you working out to actually making like a candy company is that kind of cool i mean yes yeah, it's, it's pretty cool i mean multiple forms of income i don't know maybe it just fascinates me because all right give me another one <laughs> whatever so um another one this guy's very uh-huh. low-key to like the people that don't really like go into it, but Chris Bridgeford, he's explain who he is, I guess, because most people probably don't even know. Okay, so Chris Bridgeford, he's basically so he's a powerlifting coach, powerlifter as well, very elite powerlifter. He's like I'm trying to make your own ones. Or... He's done. He's lifted like in two weight classes, like a two forty two, like a two seventy weight class, total like twenty one hundred to twenty two hundred, and he's just 
another guy that keeps to himself, minds his business, lifts heavy weights, and he owns his own gym. Like he's, I respect people that can have multiple forms of income and not have any quote unquote beef with anybody. Like I like you, you don't know, you don't you don't know that either. And but I'm saying for like what they portray. Like there's some people out there that say like, okay like they like you could tell they're arrogant or you could tell like this is like their personality. Yeah. But if you look at like Chris Bridgeford or Steffi Cohen. There's out like they're out here living their life. A lot of people have a lot of positive things to say about them. Some of the negative comments they do have get backed up by a lot of people. Like there's been points where it's like someone will comment like on Steffi's like one of Steffi's videos or something like that, something negative, and there's people just bashing that person. Yeah. Because of the person she is. I don't know her personally, but from what she portrays on social media, no, from, from, from like what like she portrays on social media, what Chris Bridgeford portrays on social media, they handle their business, do what they put their mind to, and they do their thing. Like, I could respect that. Oh yeah. They don't worry about anybody else, and they just that's a good answer. continue doing their thing. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the type of person I aspire, I aspire to be. I t- aspire yeah. to be someone that people look up to and can not be like, oh, this guy's a dickhead. Yeah. Like, he's just out here doing his thing, and it's like, I can respect that. That's nice. All right, well, I got another answer too. So I, when I think about like lifters, like we think like power lifters, I mean, obviously, there's, like, a bunch that people love. Like, you know, they love John Hack. John Hack's another good one. There's a lot of people that aren't coming to name, like, I think of. But it's kind of cool, too, because I'm also surrounded with a lot of, like, high-level quality lifters. That is true. Like, should I just go off names? Yeah, just name, name off people that we know. Like, yeah, like, that we lift with on a regular basis. You got Ashton. You got Blake. You got Jake. You got Yeah, my name as, as Joseph and Amadola. Yeah, you got Adolfo. You got, dude, like, honestly, like, everybody, like, we name is, like, you, dude, I, I hate this guy. This fucking guy. <laughs> Squad deadlift. It, be, yeah, leave the bench out yeah. of there. Bench is hitting. Yeah, dude, it's cool because like, when you like actually know like these high-level people and like, you live with them and talk to them as, as like friends, not only like acquaintances too, you really kind of like, it kind of brings them down to that level too. Because like, when you like, say if you don't know any of these lifters like, on a personal level, you see them on Instagram, like, wow, these people are like fucking idols and fucking like like gods of social media you know yeah and but like when you meet them in person they're super fucking cool it kind of brings everybody down to the same level dude like jake jake's like cool jake, ass dude i never like I, I didn't i didn't know his name was joseph first so when, yeah. I, when I started joining usapl i was like okay i'm gonna look up the top lifters in usapl you know my weight class and stuff and i see a guy joseph amandola he's like top five yeah so i'm like okay well jake's name's amandola i know you listen to usapl i <laughs> thought he, i thought he had like a twin brother or something like that the picture he found online it was uh, Jakey with a mustache. She was like, Jakey doesn't have a mustache right now. Yeah, he, he you know, sometimes he has guy? Most, I, I thought it was like his evil twin. Same so, strength, same height, same build. Yeah. So I was, so I DM'd him, I was like, hey, is your name Joseph? He goes, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, so so you're top five, like, in 105 KG weight class? He goes, yeah. And yeah. I'm just like, all right, dude, well, I mean, you never would have known because, I mean, we show up to the gym, he walks in with his sunglasses on. Yeah. And he walks yeah. in with his sunglasses on, does his lift, oh, we sit there, talk, and it's just like, Oh, oh, normal conversation. What about Shane too, Shane? But Shane, there's yeah. there's so many people. But like, so, so many smart, just yeah. smart individuals. But they're all just like beasts in the weight room, and it's like like literally, we'll be at the gym from noon to six, and it doesn't take that long to lift. Like we lift probably like two hours out of that whole time, yeah. and the rest we're just talking about like life. So, sometimes you get talks about like basically like the body with like a dolpho and stuff yeah, like this, yeah. and it's like it's interesting just to be surrounded by yeah. that group of people. But they're also so cool too, because like I remember the first time meeting all them. Cause I met uh, I met Ashton first, uh-huh. way back. I think about a year or so ago. Plus. If you don't know, a- Ashton's uh, too, too buff for this. Too buff for this. Too buff for this. Yeah, that's his Instagram name. Where everybody knows yeah. him by. But so I guess I'll give a little background too. Oh, before I go to the topic too, next week Sunday sit down. We're not gonna say who the guest is, but we're having our first official guest. It might get crazy. It might be some beer. It might be some liquor. You know, we'll see what happens. I'll be but. drinking a nice water with lemon. Nah, <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see what we're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, first Continue. guest. Not gonna tell you who it is. Just be ready for that. It'll be a fun time. This is our, we're already kind of tight in here, so I guess we'll have to like. I'm I'm, I'm getting a bigger chair. Okay. Well, I'm getting a bigger. Well, we're getting uh, angle desk. table around. Uh, but what was I gonna say? But yeah, so I met Ashton first, and this was I think I met him at the Flex, the gym, the yeah. different gym in Jacks, and he kind of uh, I didn't really know anybody else. I knew Shane. Mm-hmm. I had met them. And then Ashton's like, this is before like quarantine having him locked down. Yeah. He's like, come to the pit, come to the pit, you know? Oh, fuck. Khalil, too. Khalil. Fuck out. Like, there's so yeah. many people I just so, can't. So many. 
Thank you, Roger. If I forgot your name on here, just know you're elite, you're awesome, we love you. Booty, love you. <laughs> Everybody, dude. <laughs> Everybody, except if you're like an asshole. And, no. But I met Ashton. He was like, yeah, come to Flex, you know? I come to Pit, the gym we're trying now. And at first, it's kind of intimidating, too. Like, you walk in there and you see these, even if you're like you're strong or decent and strong, yeah. you know? You see these big ass dudes and you're like, dude, like, holy fuck, like, do I fit in here, you know? It's yeah. kind of like, kind of like impossible. I think everybody feels like that if you don't know them, you know? Oh, no, yeah, for sure. Because, like, I, I went to the commercial gym before I went to, I went to Bailey's before and I uh -huh. was like, oh, like, Bailey's is cool because, like, I was, like, not, like, crazy strong, but, like, I'm probably above average here, you know? I yeah. just chill, do my thing. Not saying, like, better than anybody, but I can just relax, do whatever I wanted. I came there and I was like, fuck, dude, like, I, I need to step my game up. Yeah, and 100%. At first, like, I was nervous for a little bit. I was like, dude, like, I don't know these guys. Because, like, you know, you see them on social media, you're like, hey, like, I wonder how they are in person. And then as we slowly became boys and became cool, I was like, dude, these guys are super fucking cool. They've supported us, supported me, supported you. Mm -hmm. Kind of brought us up to where we are now. Yeah, and I mean, I, I came in I came because of Garrett, actually. So before I got into powerlifting, I played baseball at Jackson University. It's like a small deep, like, it's a... D1, right? Yeah, it's, it's a private school in Jacksonville. Um, oh, dude, we totally went off a tangent about the fucking idols. Damn it. All right. No, I guess we're still on the topic. Yeah, we're still on, still on topic. Yeah. It could be dug up to these people. So I came from lifting there. I was the strongest guy on the team. Um, but you, but uh, I, I'm cutting you off. I'm sorry. Yeah, basically, it was just like, oh, like I'm pretty strong, whatever. I stopped playing baseball. And then coronavirus, happened, COVID happened, and I went back home to Miami, and I had some gear, my, I had some stuff in my backyard. And, like, one of the trainers from JU, like, landed me some weights. So that's where I was lifting. I was lifting in my backyard. It was just me, a speaker, and my dogs, basically. Like, my dad would come out there and work out sometimes when he did that have work. That shit was hot, too, wasn't it? Bro, it was, like, 95 degrees. I, was, I had to, like, spray down my... Like I had to spray down my bar before I used to deadlift and squat. Yeah. But, like, I came from going from there to coming back to Jacksonville and being basically thrown into the pit. Yeah. And it was just, like, I mean, you have Blake, big old bald guy... Total was like over over two k. You have Jake that that's just out there listening to heavy metal, benching six hundred pounds. Ashton that lifted eight hundred plus pounds. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, I came from my backyard, sir. Yeah. But it was like everybody's well, clicked. Like everybody was just like that atmosphere. Yeah. Well, I told him like I, I guess we're going deep. I was like, dude, I got this. Like I when I first like I actually became boys and I'm like, hey, like I got this dude coming from Miami. He plays baseball. He's pretty. He's pretty strong, you know. Minus the bench part. I was like, yeah, he's pretty strong. Okay, I get it. My yeah. bench sucks. I got <laughs> no, it doesn't suck. It's just <laughs> compared to your other... It's... Yeah, in, in comparison. Yeah, but I was like, dude, I got this dude. And they're like, oh, uh, you know, oh, like, we're, if we're strong. Like, who's this guy, you know? Yeah. And they met him, and they're like, ha, it's like I told you so. I mean, like a week later, we're all twerking in the free game. <laughs> well, not all. Well, the, you're twerking. Uh, I was twerking and having a mosh pit with, with Jake. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is... Super cool guys. Uh, don't get fooled by social media. Everybody looks bigger, better, and you meet them in real, real life. And, well, mm -hmm. not everybody. Some people are just kind of rude in real yeah. life, I guess. Like, I don't know. So I've heard from, like, other like, yeah. lifters. But the ones we know are super cool. Yeah. Go, yeah go, super thankful for. Also, people that we can call, quote-unquote, idols. Like, people that... Or people, people that we just respect. Yeah. Because, like, if we didn't know them, if you didn't know any of the guys that we know, we'd probably, like... Like, oh damn, like these are idols, you know? Yeah, and, and, and these bands like top to top, yeah. Yeah, but then now that they were so cool, it's um shh You're not disturbed, please. Fuck that. I just gotta see if like you know. But um cool. Continue. At least put it on vibrate, dude. It's Jose. Can okay, you... yeah, so put it on vibrate. Sorry guys. It came to my attention that I have a ADHD problem on my phone. Back to monotasking. Continue. Oh, idols, yeah. So, like, if we didn't know these guys, they'd definitely be idols, but we do. And now it's kind of like, we kind of, I kind of forget how, like, I forget, like, nowadays, like, how strong you guys actually are. Mm -hmm. Because I hang out with you guys so much. I'm like, dude, like, and then I realize it, and I see you guys online, like, King of Lifts or, like, some social media page. I'm like, fuck, these guys are actually pretty fucking strong, you know? Yeah. Wow. Idols. But. We saw more idols than name. Do you want to go with me? Hmm. So I have to think. So, I, I mean, as you can see, basically the routine of my idols is just some people that lift heavy, mind their business, and are really smart. Like, I, I respect intelligence. Yeah. Not saying you have to have a PhD or not, like, not saying any of that stuff, but I respect a smart lifter 
that minds his business. So, like, another example, John Hack. John Hack, what is it, mechanical engineer? I don't know. I mean, he, he's, he's, I think he's a mechanical engineer. He literally is, like, super, like, super smart. He just, and, like, straight vibes, bro. Yeah, like, like, you, like, you look at John Hack on social media and you think, okay, like, how can you have, how can you not like this guy? Like, he walk, I feel like he just walks into the gym and kind of just smiles. Yeah. Totals whatever. And he totals 2K and then just goes, all right, guys, see you next week. And walks yeah. out. Kind of like same Jake vibes. Like just exactly. Walk, like just, just, walk, just walks in, smiles, just like, oh, like little, like little awkward jokes here and there. And then just deadlift, squats, and benches the world. And then just, all right, guys, same time next week. All right, peace. Peace. And it's like, I can respect that because it's like, okay, come in, get your job done. You know, don't, like, you're not a burden to anybody. It's like, yeah. If you're strong, but you're an a-hole, yeah, that just basically cuts out. I don't care how strong you are. I'm negative. Yeah. Because like, bro, like, I I guess I'm gonna quote. Uh, I think it's Maya Angelou. Okay. This is gonna be really. <laughs> this is gonna be really bad. Quote well, Maya Angelou. I'm gonna really. I'm gonna really butcher it. So um. People will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Wow, that was actually really good. I think I quoted it pretty spot on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I back to your point. Back to your point. Yeah, it's like, like you can be like, at the end of the day, like if someone sees your lift and you say like you pull a thousand pounds or bench mm. like eight hundred pounds, like you know, like that's cool. Like for the moment, people will be like, "Damn, that's amazing," you know. Yeah. But then, I mean, it all fades, you know. Like yeah, lifting like lifting is cool, but like it's gonna fade eventually. But, oh, like a, a day, a month, a year, but oh, like whatever, you know. Yeah. But who you are as a person. We'll always kind of vibe them too so like i'd much rather be i really be both i, I kind of want to be the best of both worlds i want to be like the strongest no, and like, the coolest person yeah. but if you have a choice i'd say like hey like choose being a good person being cool like caring with people over just being the strongest motherfucker ever yeah damn so cliche out of boy out of boy <laughs> my angelou shout out i think she's dead this week we're not gonna talk about i don't know continue, continue. i'm sorry yeah uh, where's that? This is your turn. To my idols? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, I think lifting, I think I kind of, I think in the more powerlifting sense, I kind of covered the idols I had. Yeah. But I do have some bodybuilding idols too, which I was actually looking at the phone before you cut me off. I have all these, like, people I follow that I look up to, but I always, like, forget. Um, I guess one more lifting. I like Russ Roll. I know he gets a lot of hate. Oh, no, nothing against Russ Roll. Yeah, I love Russ Roll. See, they, he minds his business. He's got a gym. He's strong. He's has a uh, clothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do want to get some of his clothing. I do want to get some of his like. He has that um, partnership with a. Uh, I hope I don't mess up the name. An Anika. Anaka. Anaka. Yeah. Anaka. Yeah, his friend Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool too. So I'd like to get some of that. And then his uh, I kind of did consider trying BPN just because of him. The thing about Russ is that a lot of people confuse confidence for cockiness. I don't he think seem cocky, I don't think he's cocky. You can tell he's cocky. Bro. As as an athlete, as an like being a college athlete and everything, yeah, you have to be confident. Like he oh, has that yeah. in him. Like he played football. Like he has that confidence in him. Like you know what? Yeah. Once you're at that level, it's like you have to be, have that sense of eagerness, that sense of confidence yeah. in order to succeed. That's a it's big not thing, cockiness. Big like, thing. If it was cockiness, he would have been bragging all over the place. Yeah. Never see that dude brag. He goes up, does his stuff, dude. I mean, hey man, if if you if you squat, you want to squat seven hundred pounds and do a dance after you do yeah. a damn dance after. Bro, like people Bro, like, like dude, like the stuff he does, like it's part of his life. Like you know, like that's I, who he is. Yeah, like, like the the stuff you see, like you see the gym, you mm -hmm. see the supplements, you see the sponsorships, you see the clothing. Dude's working, man. You see the uh, like the cars, the luxuries. That's not him bragging or being like crazy. That's that's just that's a result of the stuff he's earned over his yeah. lifetime. So why would you not show that shit, you know? Exactly. Like, why would you not? If you work, oh, if you work so hard in order to get somewhere in your life, yeah. dude, show it off. Like, if you had a six pack, you showed off. I mean, I would, if I had one right now, I'd show that shit off. I wouldn't even wear a shirt. I feel like that's not a, I feel like that's not the same well, thing. Well, I'm saying like, if you work, yeah, no, yeah, you I know what I'm saying? No, yeah. I understand. But it's like, simple enough. Yeah, like he, he works hard for what he has. Yeah. And you never see him saying, I have this, what do you have? Or I have, he's always like, his quote, get better at it. Like a lot of people quote that. Like, That's such a good quote. I wish yeah. I came up with that. And it's just like, you can't get mad at someone for doing what he said he's gonna do. Yeah. Like, so like someone could say all day, "Oh, I'm gonna start a gym. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be on the top power in the world." But they don't do it. Yeah. But you can't get mad when someone says it, does it, and then speaks another thing into existence. Yeah. Like home homeboy said he wanted a gym. 
He, he said he wanted to jump back on his YouTube channel like a while ago. Yeah. He's working on it. Manifesting. It's, yeah, it's, it's like you gotta speak into existence. You can't get yeah. mad at someone. It's not being cocky. He's being it's, confident to speak dude, into existence. Dude, that guy. And people are just so sensitive nowadays. Like, honestly, like, like I mean, his lifting's obviously impressive. Like, I love lifting, but I like him yeah. more as a person than I do his lifting, too. Like, it's, I mean, whatever, like, whatever happens lifting, I don't really... I care about I don't care, but like yeah. dude, like the stuff he does outside of that is super cool. And he like based on the YouTube videos I watched of his, he seems like a really nice, cool guy. Yeah. Person. I mean, we don't know him personally, so we can't I say. Can, yeah, that's true. Exactly. I would definitely. But from what he portrays, dude. I mean, dude seems like he seems like an athlete. He has that athlete mentality. He has like yeah. dog, like had a dog mentality. He's like, hey, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna perform. I'm gonna show you that I'm confident. And then F everybody else. Yeah. I would, if he's watching this, which I doubt he is, I would love, we would love to come to your gym. But what I was gonna say too, that whole, that, I wanna touch on that point you're saying, that whole uh, like athlete dog mentality, that's such an underrated part of not only like lifting, but like mm -hmm. life in general too. Like people like nowadays, like, I mean, I, we both come from athletic backgrounds. Yeah. You obviously went further, you went to JU, like college. Yeah. I stopped in high school. I did, did uh, football and wrestling for a few years, but. That whole like dog mentality is such, so underrated. Yeah, you know, like just like I keep cutting you off. I'm sorry. No, it just oh it God. transfers over so well, so well to so many different things, like life, lifting, business, yeah. relationships. Like, bro, like if you're not more cliche, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got and, and you could get an athlete and throw them in any field to where they want to succeed, and they'll find a way. Like, like we, like me personally. I mean, I've always been somewhat of a nerd. Like, I've always been in school and everything. Yeah, I can see about that. Yeah, that's that's geek. That's different. That's a weird type thing. But it's like you could throw an athlete into a field, give him a book. If he really wants to do, if he or she really wants to do it, they will come out. Like, give them some time. They might fall down, might get back up. Yeah. But they will actually come out and do it to the best of their ability. Yeah. Because it's like it's that dog mentality. It's that never give up mentality. And it's like if you give us a goal that we want to achieve. Yeah. We're gonna do all we can to get there. Yeah. I mean that's everything, like not only just like the field and sports, that's just life too, bro. You know, yeah. like people um I've been guilty of this. I mean you have to. I think everybody has been. Like some people sometimes you fall into that like victim mindset, you know, oh like why are things against me? Like whether it be lifting or life, like you always you inevitably sometimes fall in that category, you know? Mm -hmm. Like damn, like you kinda of feel bad for yourself. But like that whole mentality of dog, that shit will get you out of everything too like yeah. starting business starting your life like whatever it may be too like if you look at like the top level people not just lifting mm -hmm. but like people who've built stuff like the ones we talked about earlier like yeah steffi uh russ Wall, christian max they all have that mentality whether they show it or not of just yeah. competing not only with themselves but with other people too that's another big thing i want to talk about too people dude this is a good rant we're going on too um you know people always say like hey like the only competition is the one in the mirror type stuff too. Yeah. That's true to a point. Like you should always want to be better than yourself too. But the people who say they don't want to beat everybody else, they're lying. They're soft. They're that's so, lying. That's so soft. Like we're like, it's, I, I posted the other day, I was like, dude, like I love you and I want to see you do the best you can and all you guys mm -hmm. do. Yeah. But I definitely, I want to beat all of you guys. Like I want to be stronger than all of y'all. Yeah. Why and, would you not want to be? Like, and the thing know? is, the funny dynamic is, so I coach him, he coaches me. People don't we, like that. People think it's weird. People think it's weird. But the know. thing is, it's when working. You, when you have that dynamic, because we, we keep we keep it like... It's, like, yeah, it's and, like teammates. Yeah, we basically, we keep note of everything we do. So, let's say I schedule Garrett a 5x3 on squat. If he does 585, you best believe the next time he gives me 3 at, a, at the same RPE, yeah. I'm doing 600. Yeah. And then he sees me do 600, he's like, alright, I'm doing 605. And it's like, it just goes like that. Like, it's so simple like, to like a sport. It's like, bro, yeah. like, if you're playing like... Say, like, I, I can't say baseball because I don't know anything about baseball, but say, like, we're playing football, you know? If I was playing, like, offensive linemen, you're playing, like, defensive linemen, mm -hmm. and we're going head-to-head, -head, like, at the end of the day, we're still teammates. We still want to, like, win. We still want to do the best we can. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to run your ass off. Yeah, best believe. Like, I, I want to beat you, bro. Like, yeah. that's a good topic that uh, Steph he was talking about, too, about competition. Like, especially in powerlifting, people, like, they expect you. Let me say it close to the mic before I cut off. But, uh, like, <laughs> like, of course, like, you want to see all the other competitors doing well. Like, you want to see everybody be safe, have fun do better than they did last time but you want to beat every single person in that room you know yeah like i'm not like if i'm going like me and you like this might theoretically happen 
which will be kind of weird too. Like we go in the same meet, same weight class too, and we still coach each other. Might that, be kind of that, weird. That's where that's, that's gonna that, be kind of hard. We'll but, we'll figure that out as we get there yeah. too. But like best believe, like we're going back to back. Like I want to see you do well, I want to do me. But I'm focusing on me, and I'm focused on how can I beat Brandon. Like how can yeah. I, maybe not squat, maybe not deadlift, but do it. Best believe, when that bench press comes, <laughs> the, oh, <laughs> you're done. And I think that goes into one of the topics. Me, three pounds. I feel like that goes into like one of the topics we want to talk about. Um, surrounding yourself with like get like the people you surround yourself with. Oh, before we go on the topic, I want to talk about one more thing. Okay, so, continue. Cool. So uh, also, this is kind of similar to the uh, the cockiness and the confident thing too. Mm-hmm. So I think me and you, because like we've had that history and we've been around people, you can tell who's cocky and who's confident. You know, it's kind of like I don't know how to describe it, but you can see like how they talk, how they walk. You know, mm-hmm. but uh, ego. I think ego has its good and bads. What do you think about ego? Like in terms of like just like you know ego like ego. So you have to know the difference between your ego and your mind telling you you could do something. Yeah. Because that's cause, cause there's been many times where I go into a lift where I know I have like let's say deadlifts because that's what like that's one of my favorite things. Like yeah. there's been days where it's like I look at the program and see I have a heavy deadlift on Friday. You best be, I wake up Friday morning and say, I want to hit this number. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to hit this number. Now, to a certain extent, if I wake up that morning, I'm feeling good, I want to hit this number, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit it, it's going to move well. But where ego comes in is I wake up that morning, I don't feel great, yeah. but I already said I'm going to hit 760. Yeah. And I go into the lift, I feel kind of sluggish, it's not going well. That without, fuck you up too. Yeah, without just taking the 740 I had that day, and going for 760, that's ego. Yeah. And then you make it look slow. You don't have you don't have the RPE range, and then it sets you back a couple of lifts, and yeah. it messes up your mind. I mean, I've done that two or three times already. Yeah. And it's like it's true. You have to know the difference between your ego and just I guess your instinct. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna take it a step further too. I'm gonna I'm gonna relate it not to, to lifting. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna say. I'll do, the, I'll do a few goods and a bad. So I think the bad is definitely what you said first. But it kind of comes down like how you, what we talked about earlier about like if you have a too big of an ego and you start thinking yourself superior to everybody and then you kind of like talk down, be little people, like kind of goes back to just being a good person, you know? Mm-hmm. That's kind of like the downside too. Like if it's too big, you can tell like we know the difference between like being cocky, being confident, Yeah, you know? I can't really think of any examples off the top of my head. And if I did, I probably wouldn't say it. Because I don't, probably don't know those people personally. Yeah. Well, actually, I do have an example in my head. I'm not going to say it. But okay. let's, say, like, let's say, like, in context, like, if you see, like, some social media lifters, like, big times, I guess you can kind of, like, get a sense of, by the words they say, the posts they say, like, who's just too cocky, you know? Yeah. Like, say, like, say, like you, say, like, you're, like, a top level lifter and you have a competition coming up in a few months. Mm-hmm. And they're like, hey, like, you already declare yourself the winner, but hey, like, there's no competition. I'm gonna win. Like, I'm here to. I'm already regaining my throne. Like, just, like shit like that, you know? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to. But like, you know, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. There's different ways to word things. Yes, there have been times that I've gone into. Like, I've only done one meet. But there's been times I've gone into yeah. like competition, where. I've had that mentality where it's like, oh no, I'm gonna beat everyone that comes in front of me. Yeah. That's more of a drive thing versus saying, Oh, I'm already in first place. I'm taking like I already have this in the bag, y'all better not try. Yeah. Like there's a difference in ways you word things and there's a difference in the way you present things that can make it look yeah. either egotistic or make it look like you're just confident. Like yeah. this meet I'm going into, I am a hundred percent in the drive. I wanna do the best I can. And I'm gonna do the best I can to beat everyone that's in front of me. Yeah, that's my mentality. Like I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna show out. I'm gonna do exactly what I want to do. I'm gonna do exactly what I need to do. Yeah. In order to get to that first place, but I'm not gonna sit here and say, "Oh yeah, I have first place in the bag." It's like it's a, it's yeah. a no doubter because I don't know. That would be ego too. Yeah. I guess I guess ego would be like you could see it, like what you said, like how somebody presents it too. Mm-hmm. Like if someone, I'm trying to think, I just had this thought how to word it, like, I guess. I guess the defining characteristic of like a too big ego is like if you promote if the main purpose of you like saying or doing something is to get I guess favorable response from the people and like kind of publicly show that you're better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of like if you like 
you're confident. You, if, I guess, if confidence speaks, like you don't really need to like, are confident silent. You know, like yeah. people can tell you're confident. You don't have to say. Pause. Okay. Is it going again? Yeah. Cool. 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 Damn. We were too damn big. <laughs> Sorry to your One of the chairs like collapsed. All right, so I guess it goes back to being like the dog drive the mentality too. You can't do anything without ego too. Ego is such a big thing. Like people like people always say, oh, like his ego is too big. Oh, like he's too full of himself. Mm -hmm. But dude, ego gets you so much places. Like dude, you know how many times like I've had people tell me like, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that. Like people I've been close to, like my ego, like I, you need that ego too. That ego just drives me. Like you know what? Fuck y'all. Like I'm gonna do it. You know. I feel like you don't call that ego. Well, like, you know, like, I guess, I guess it would be, because, like, my ego is saying, like, hey, like, they're saying I can't do this, and I know I can do this, should not, I need to prove them wrong, you know, like, would that, like, that would be ego. If that's more of a drive thing. Well, drive falls into ego, too, like, if you don't have ego, you don't have drive, you know? Because, like, say, like, you're losing, like, say you're losing to a game, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, like, you're losing to, like, lifter, and, like, and, like, your ego is saying, hey, like, I should beat this dude, like, I'm better, like, even though you don't say that. That's what drives you to do it, you know? Because if you didn't have ego, like, if you weren't, like, focused on you, then you wouldn't drive to be better. Does that make sense? Somewhat. Somewhat? I get where you're getting at. You, you, I, I, feel, I, just feel, I feel like, stupid. I just feel like there's a better word than... There probably is. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I mean... Ego can't... will cover it. Okay. I think I had another idol. Do you have another idol? I'm done with idols. Well, I had a bunch of, like... I'm not I mean, other than, like... Of course, like parents and stuff like that. This that's yeah. a different. This is a dude I like. I like I like looking at some, like I don't like all bodybuilders, but I do like some that like like what's this, like this guy Chris Bumstead. Are you see this dude? Like, I think he won Mr. Olympia. Like he's super jacked, but he's mm -hmm. such a cool guy too. That's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. Cool. <laughs> what's the next topic? So. I think the one topic that we should really cover is basically like surrounding yourself with oh, like a good, good topic. Group. Good topic. Do you want to start this off for me? Well, I guess I, I guess you I'll, can start it off. Okay. I'll, I'll come in later. All right. So surrounding yourself with good people too. I think this comes down to a few things. Well, I guess I have a few different circles too. Cause like, I, I think you do too. Cause of your mm -hmm. background too. So like I have like, I have like a work circle. I have like a lifting partner circle. I have like a friend circle. Like I have like four or five circles that don't really intermix mm -hmm. you know yeah but all those circles like i'm happy with how they are now you know like i'm happy with people that are in them mm -hmm. give or take because i had to get rid of a lot of people you know but um i think each circle or just all the circles together too it can help I'm losing my train of thought I'm trying to monotask too but i think the people around you you know that quote the quote big quote guy like you are the the average of the five people you're surrounding yourself with the most. Yeah, you yeah. are you are you are who you accompany yourself with. Basically, too, like whoever you accompany yourself with, and the thoughts that enter that too, kind of define your path and where you're going, direction wise. You know, too, mm -hmm. whether good or bad, too. So, like, say you had a bunch of people around you in your circle who just kind of doubted you, said you were shit, kind of like, kind of like just put you down every chance you get, too. Mm -hmm. Like inevitably, whether you want to or not, you're gonna go down. You know. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, you need to choose your people super well. I'm going to let you go ahead so I can kind of build on topics. Okay, so the way I look at it is, so as I said earlier, um, you are who you accompany yourself with. And that's true to a big extent. I'm not saying you're going to morph into that person. Yeah. But let's say, for example, you're surrounded by... Let's say you're hanging out with lo like losers. Not like... No, people, people. I, I won't say that. I said let's let's say you're surrounded by a lot of people that just like to just sit on the couch and they don't really they leave much, they sit on the couch, they That's watch T V, yeah. watch and do that all day. You're more than likely gonna end up staying on the couch all day versus yeah. going on a run if you want to, going to the gym if you want to, because that's just what the people surrounding you are doing. Yeah. But a lot of people when they hear that yep, that you are who you surround yourself with they think that they have to abandon that friend they've been friends with since fifth grade. Yeah. But at that point, there's ways to surround yourself with better people for you, but still keeping the people in your life that you want to. That's true. Like, let's say for example, like I play baseball. I have, I have my, OG, I have my boys that I play, I play baseball with. I've known since I was twelve. Mm -hmm. 
everything. I have my lifting group. And then there's like a line. Boss. Yeah. So when it comes to lifting, when it comes to dreams and aspirations, I have a group that they're either good lifters, have dreams and aspirations that they're doing it, like that aren't that it, they don't lift but they have a plan. Yeah. Or they're just people that always support me. Yeah. Like the other day I had a heavy squat. I had a heavy squat at the gym and Dude, like, that was also kind of funny too. Yeah, like, like I pulled up I, with I pulled up with a posse. squad. Like I'm here lifting too. I'm like, who the fuck coming in here, dude? There's like five dudes. I'm like, dude, what yeah. the fuck? And it literally started by I texted one of the old baseball group chats and I was like, hey, like I have a heavy squat today. Like, can one like can somebody record me? Like, I'm not trying to like focus on camera angles and everything. I have a YouTube channel which is going to be on. Yeah. But what well, it started off with one person responded said they got me, and then he texted me individually. And said, "Hey, like me, co- like me and uh, four other guys want to come, like support you, just come watch and like help you out, like, like do like, whatever you need." So I'm at home and just a squad of my boys, just from that I played baseball with. They just finished like their fall season. They didn't have to come. Drove 20 minutes out of my house to ride to the gym with me to support me on my squat day. It was just a normal day at the gym. I was squatting heavy. They spotted me, helped me put up weights. Now they don't. They're not powerlifters, but those are people you want to surround yourself with that want to see you succeed. Yeah. You don't want to surround yourself with people, people that are, are jealous. Secretly, secretly hating, too, you know? Yeah, a lot of people are like secretly you jealous. Those people like, ah, dude, I don't... It's hard to tell, but you ever, like, you ever have those... I guess you want to call them friends. You call them more like acquaintances. Like, people mm-hmm. like, who are nice to you, but you can like tell, like, low-key, they don't want to see you doing better than them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my biggest thing is... You live once, so do what's best for your life and do what's yeah. best for your future. Don't let something that you're trying to hold on to decide how you're going to be in the future. Because if you have to try super hard to hold on to it, it's not for you. Yeah. Like, if you have to go out of your way to hold on to a friendship, like someone's not reaching out, or you have to try to go out of your way to hang out with somebody because like, you want to see these people you know them forever, yeah. if they're not reciprocating the same effort and they're not putting in the same energy into you, yeah. I'm sorry, man, you're just, you're going to have to drop them or you're going to have to minimize the time you like, spend with them. Like maybe go out to lunch every once in a while. Like if you've been yeah. friends since third grade, you know, you can meet up for a lunch. That's fine. You don't have to be at their house every single day. But you can go out for lunch. Yeah. You can meet up for a couple drinks, like if you do drink or like just here and there. But you don't have to surround yourself 24-7 with someone that doesn't put out the same energy that you put out. Like a lot of people like in relationships, they talk about, oh, you have to match my energy. Yeah. It's the same thing with friendships. Like. If you don't match my energy and you don't give me what I give out to you, I'm not gonna yeah. waste my time. Yeah. Let me uh, clarify too for one. So when I said like losers earlier, I meant like the people you're talking about. Like losers, not like being like being people like unmotivated, don't care, bring you down. That's what I meant by losers too. You know. Dude, you don't, you don't have to specialize. It's our podcast. They I know. They don't like what I say. Some people might get kind of like, oh, am I a loser? No. Like if you're just if you just don't care about anything, you're unmotivated, don't want to do anything have no dreams, aspirations, then yeah, you might be. But yeah, I think that whole like, that's tough too, because like, there's levels to it. So like, I have I have friends, I have best friends who I don't talk to as regularly anymore, because mm-hmm. they've gone on to different things in life, other states, other countries, like whatever. I still have friends, like I might not hit them up every day, every week, maybe not every month. Like we're still super close, you know? Yeah. And that's tough too, because like, what you're saying about like, hey, like they don't match the energy, you don't need to be around them. That's tough for some people because they've been friends for so long too, you know? It's like a relationship, like, mm. like a relationship, like if you like see it like dying and you feel like you need to leave, it's hard to because you feel like so invested, you know? Yeah, it's same with friendships. But I mean, that goes back to what, like, you don't have to spend every, like, you don't have to put yeah. that much energy into them. If they're like yeah. that, then reduce it to just a lunch. Yeah. Re- That's like, fine. like, you still care about them to an extent. Like, if you guys have been friends for that long, I'm not saying completely, but oh, delete their, no. delete their number. Block more Unless something really bad happens too. Then. Yeah, but I, when it comes to that point, it's like okay, well, I'm gonna focus on me. Yeah, you know, I, I always got your back, and like I'm always here. Like if you need yeah, something, you know? yeah, yeah. Like if you call me, you need something, I always got your back. But you know, we're not gonna talk every day. I'm not gonna hang out with you every single day. Yeah, but I'm still here for you. Like we'll meet up for like I'll be home. Like if you, if, let's say like your friend that lives out of town, but hey, I'll be home for a week for Thanksgiving. We could go out, have a couple yeah. drinks, and we'll we'll catch up. Like people confuse each other. Like hey, like if I don't. Just because I don't hit you up every day, I don't like talk to you. Doesn't mean like we're not cool, you know. Like if I'm not cool with you. Like I'm not gonna like. I probably won't even. I'll probably just disconnect completely, you know. Yeah. Like I have people like. like I'm trying to. 
uh, yeah, like you said about lunch too. Like I have people like I don't see as often as I want to, but I'm still cool with them. You know, like, I'm not gonna like call you every day and say you're doing, but unless like I make it clear that I'm not really with you or like I block you, just like disconnect. Mm -hmm. It's safe to say that we're still friends, you know. Yeah, but like same thing we said about like have people that don't serve you, you know, like you don't have to totally abandon them, but you need to like. I guess it comes down to communication too. Like you probably need to have a talk with them too, you know. Yeah. Because people change, times change, like your goals, like your, what you want to do changes, and people would take that personally too, you know. Mm -hmm. Same like a relationship. Like say like, say you guys start dating when you're like sixteen, you know. Mm -hmm. Like you're and then you're dating for like four years, so you're twenty. You're two completely different people, complete different mindsets, complete different goals compared to you were a few years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. And people just don't realize that you're not gonna you, you're meant to change like grow you know like it's not always gonna be the same same with friendships like hey like i have friends like i used to be really close with i played sports with the high school for example too you know like i still care about them mm -hmm. i mean i'll like i'll be here if you need anything but i'm not gonna go my way to like hang out with them or talk to them no like i'm not like that like you meant a lot to me in this part of my life mm -hmm. but that part was that part that chapter you know now yeah. it's this part i still care about you i still have love for you i hope everything goes well in your life but I'm on to different things now, different people I'm doing more. And people just take that so Personal. personally, you know? Yeah. Because you're going to do that to somebody else, somebody's going to do to you, it's just a circle that goes too, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why, like, I goes on a tangent too, because, like, like, you see people, like, you see people who, like, example, would date in high school, and, like, high school sweethearts, you know? Mm -hmm. I think for some people it works, some people are very happy, but other people get, like, trapped in that fear, like, hey, like, I don't know anything else, I don't know the world. Fly. Same with like friendships too. Like if you're only like surrounded with these set of people and you don't know anything else, you don't know what the world has to offer. You're never gonna grow, you know. Yeah. You gotta always like same thing here. Like I've been in Florida for like 21 years, bro. You know how often I'm gonna leave? This never come back. Very often. Very. Well, not I'll not I'll never come back, but how often I just wanna leave and go explore for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very frequently because I just wanna go see what else is out there. Same with friendships. Same with relationships, people. Same idea too. So I guess the main thing is, um, I guess you need to reevaluate your goals. You need to talk to like the people you're around. But hey, like, this is how I think now. This is what I want to do. And those people aren't fitting. Then you need to move them, find people. You know, mm -hmm. that's tough. I've I've lost a lot of people, and I had that talk like, hey, like. I know we used to do this. I know we used to hang out. We used to engage in like these kind of just chilling and like hanging out, drinking, like partying, whatever. But I'm not that person anymore. I'm doing this, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. That stuff, tough to do. It's like saying they talk to your partner. Like, hey, like, I know we've been dating for four years, but I don't feel fulfilled. So either can, like, we change something? Could we fix this, like, start talking? Or I'm just gonna have to cut it and go several ways. And that's a hard thing to do, you know? Yeah. I've had trouble doing that. I'm sure you have. Everybody has. I'm not saying it's easy, but you have to, like, take a look in the mirror reevaluate, assess the situation from a non emotional position. Like logical, you know? Yeah. Whatever's best for you. Yeah. Yeah, sums it up pretty well. That sums it up pretty well. I mean Two words, grow up. Grow up. I That's mean what I got. you just like I know you told me this before too, because I, I tend to take things very personally. Very personally. Very like small dude, things. Small things. Like I kinda read into it so much like, hey like this person act this way, like like fuck them, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's that's also I need to grow up, you know, more sure about that too. But you can't take things too personally, unless it's like obviously it's something like super personal, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so evaluate your goals, evaluate, manifest where you want to go, and see if the people in that circle fit where you want to go to. Another good thing I heard too about like advice from people too. Mm -hmm. You know, like people like give so much like unsolicited advice nowadays too, like what you should do. Mm -hmm. Don't ever take advice from somebody that's not in a position where you want to be, you know? What, what what my parents always tell me is take everything with a grain of salt. So to explain that is, let's say you have 10 different people giving you advice. This guy being hitting. You have 10 different people giving you advice. You don't have to do exactly what every single one of them says. You pick and choose what you like. Just like what I said with the picking the program, you pick and choose what you like. You take that and then you abandon the rest. Yeah. You you listen, you know, you show your attention, it's respect. You show yeah. you show them your respect. But just because someone's telling you to do something, they can have they All, can they they, they, they can mean they, they can mean everything to you. They could be really trying to help you, 
but it's your life you take what works for you and then you abandon the rest and you apply it to your life yeah. like i mean it could be your your grandparents your parents they like people that are super close to you can be giving you advice about things but you don't have to take every single word they say and try to do it just because you feel like you're like you're, you're obligated, obligated yeah yeah so you take you take it with a grain of salt okay cool thank you i really like this don't really think this will help me yeah da, da, da. but i'm gonna use this thank you for considering me thank you for talking to me and yeah. then you go on with your life that that's that's how you basically create that's basically how you mold yourself as yeah. as a person as a student in life you pick and choose what works for you and you mold it into your own personality yeah. like especially like doctors and stuff every single doctor has a different has that different method you take what you learn from school, you take that up, you, mer- you merge into your personality, and then you go into the field specifically you want to go into. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, basically yeah. take everything, appreciate everything, appreciate what everybody tells you, That's, but do what's best for you. You gotta also see like where the motives are coming for too. Like I guess to come back to circ- like your circle of people, mm-hmm. like if you have like your old like circle of like people are close to you telling them to do something, you gotta look and see if it benefits them first too. Cause that can also like, you gotta see like, how that affects them because they might, they might be like not everybody but they might feel a way to tell you something that's going to help them more than it's going to help you you know mm. that's why you got to kind of weigh the options too like most people yeah. like like give you advice they don't mean it in a bad way they mean it like from what they know mm. their perspective but that's all it is it's their perspective it's not yours you know yeah that's tough because i do the same shit like i tell like if i tell like one of my friends or one of my like family or something i tell tell them my advice based on my perspective you know mm. And that may not always be the right, but it's what I know, and it might not work the best for them too. So I guess you gotta kinda like reduce your ego a little bit on too. But hey, like, and same thing when I take advice. Like I know like, I've had cases where I've had people give me advice where I feel like they're unqualified to give me advice. And I kinda took it kind of personally, which I shouldn't have, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I need to be more, you need to be more like receptive. But hey, like, listen to it, evaluate like, like why is this person giving me advice? What do they mean by it? And how can I apply this? Will it help, will it hurt me? Mm. be more logical versus emotional of it makes yeah. sense and and i mean yeah. like me pers- like you like you know me me personally i never turn on advice like like, yeah. one, like one of our one of our friends is he's a he's a lifter he literally just graduated high school like he's three years three to four years younger than me and, and if if he dms me and says hey I noticed something with your sumo, or but I noticed something here I say, I, i'll always say okay what you got like i'll never be like oh dude i like like, I'm stronger than you, I'm older than you, I'm yeah. like, like, no, like, if someone has advice, listen to what they have to say, because it might help you. Like, don't yeah. just cut out people because they're younger than you, don't just cut out people because... Because you feel like, more better yeah, than them. Yeah, like, this guy has the best intentions ever, so it's like, he wants okay, to see you so, so it's like, okay, look, I'll listen to you, and then when you explain it, but like, okay, well, this is why I don't do this, because blah 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 yeah. or you be like you know what that makes a lot of sense i'll try it out and if it doesn't work blah, blah, blah. and then more than likely that person will be like okay cool yeah thank you thank you for listening to me and because they know hey it probably won't work for everybody so say yeah. okay you'll try it out be like hey i really like that i'm doing it now or i try it out be like oh you know i felt this blah, blah, yeah. and i didn't feel comfortable it's like, okay go back to what you're doing yeah it's like or- just don't shut out people because you feel more uh, you feel more obligated yeah. to like give advice than they do I don't think are. I don't think Foodie is a good example because Foodie actually is very smart and he just wants to see no, the best. But, but yeah. it's anybody like because I don't even, know even, even, too, yeah. even when I played even when I played baseball, I was a senior on the team, and if a freshman came up to me, no, if a freshman came up to me and was like was like hey dude like um like not like not to be rude but da da blah blah, blah I'm like you know what thanks makes sense yeah but you know it's like all right, all right cool I'm not gonna be like oh shut up freshman like no yeah. like, and people that do that they miss out on great opportunities because everybody has a different mind yeah. everybody thinks differently you're not gonna think I'm not gonna think the same way you think you're not gonna think no. the same way I think but some methods I have may help you mm-hmm. in part, parts you lack yeah and some methods you have will help me in parts I lack yeah not nobody has a perfect mind nobody thinks perfectly and so you have to take everything, you have to take as much as you can from other minds yeah. and mold it into your own life and basically grow from it. That's tough, yeah, because like, it's, I guess it's big ego too. Like I have people like, like I'm obviously I'm still learning and everything too, like business, like mm-hmm. whatever business I'm doing, personal training, coaching. And I have people like offer me advice too, but hey, like this is what you probably should do next time, like better. And I'm like, dude, like I try to take all that shit too, you know? I'm yeah. like, dude, like listen, like I know like I'm not the best. I just, not just started with, more taking it seriously more recently so mm-hmm. i'm still learning 
I can accept it. Just don't be rude about it, you know? Like, don't, like... Like, I love to learn, but I hate to be taught, you know what I'm saying? Like, as long as you come about it in a cool way, like, in a... Don't come at me like, hey, like, here's what you should do, this is wrong, you know? Then I'll mm -hmm. be like, alright, you know what, like, don't talk to me, too. And I stop, and I've also had people, like, DM me, like, asking for, like, lifting advice. I'm like, hey, like, bro, like, you DM me, you're asking for advice. I'm like, alright, hey, man, here's what you should do, here's what I think will work. Could you come to me? Try this, this, this. And they'd be like, you know what, no, no, nah, I don't think that makes sense, you know? And I'm like, bro, like, why would you come to me and ask for advice, you know? No, but in that situation, you say, like, okay. All right, what would you, know, you do, you know, bro? Look, you, look, there's the way to deal with that situation. If someone comes to you for advice, you give them advice, and they don't want to take it, say, yeah, right. say, okay, sorry, it doesn't work for you, and but thank you for considering me. Like, there's different ways to go about it to yeah. where you don't stress it. Because, like I said, like I always say, control what you can control. Yeah. You can't control what they want to do. But you gave them the advice you thought they came to you, and they don't want to take it. Okay, cool, sorry. Yeah. Go back to doing what you're doing. Sorry, I couldn't help. Yeah. And then it's no way on you. You're not pissed off for no reason. And you go back to your life. You go back to watching your Netflix shows and you live your life. Yeah. It's like, dude, like there's so many ways just to be happy. One second. I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Okay. Got a lot of water in her drinks. I guess you can keep recording. You want to keep talking to him? Okay. I, yeah, I'm going to start the next um, segment with dealing with, with dealing with failure. I'll be right back. Yeah. Fill me in what you say so okay. I can add on to it. Sorry, guys. All right, so you guys are gonna be solo, with Bam Bam. All right, so one of the other topics we want to we want to cover is uh, dealing with failure. So a lot of people they like to think that they know how to fail, but they really don't. So I was at the beach this morning. I, had, I wrote down a lot of stuff. Had some thinking. Watched the sunrise. And the thing about failure is that life is trial and error. Like a lot of people, they're scared to fail because they feel like they won't come back up. But you have to be able to learn, study, and dissect where you mess up and then basically change it like life is basically so it's like a test i mean the easiest way to get through a test is to look at to look at the question you know you learn from it you figure it out and then you learn from the lecture and you put it into basically practical ways so if you look at a test and if you just skip it you're still gonna get that question wrong like there's no skipping a question still maybe getting it right no you're getting that question wrong so why not Skip it, go back to it, evaluate it, and then answer the question right. What a lot of people do in life, they have something where they fail, and they basically just brush it off. Like, okay, whatever, it's a failure, it makes me stronger, I'm gonna keep going. But they never take the time to evaluate that, and then they never take the time to actually think on that failure oh, and learn from it. I'm back. And Garrett's back. But continue, Sorry, yes. continues what I was saying. If you fail in life, a lot of people, they just like to make you feel good, so they basically say, just keep on going. But you can't just ignore that failure, you have to learn from it. Like, you can't just sit there and be like, okay, well, my goal is this, and I messed up, but I'm gonna keep going. You're gonna continue to mess up because you're never gonna learn from that failure, it's gonna be a circle. That's why you see people, they stay in the same loop for years and years, because they never dwell on that failure, never learn from it, and never fix what happened. What, uh, what have you covered so far? I wanna hop on this. Uh, basically, I covered how life is trial and error. Yeah. I compared it to a test. Basically, if you skip a, if you skip a question on a test, you're not gonna get it right. Yeah. So it's like you take what you learn from the lecture, you put it into whatever practical stuff, and you basically yeah. answer the question right. And if you don't get it right, you ask the teacher after, mm -hmm. and you basically figure it out. And what a lot of people do in life is that they'll fail, and they say they get back up, and they don't worry about it, but then they make the same mistake years later, That's and they wonder why they never reach their goals. Yeah. And it's like. Another thing that goes into that, there's so there's a difference between having a one-track mind and being able to adapt. So a lot of people, like, there's a lot of people that they always have, they have a plan A, a plan B, or even like a plan C. But once they're out of plans, they panic, like they don't know what to do. So yeah. you have to be able to adapt and be able to like basically connect the dots. That's tough. I was gonna. That's a tough topic because because well, I have a bunch. I have a I have a shit ton to talk about in here. Okay. Anyway. But like, I, I guess I'll go off adapting too. Adapting is such a big thing because now that I'm worried, I'm not gonna say like my political beliefs, obviously not. But if the country does go on a lockdown again too, that's gonna be super tough. Because I recently like I left my like full time, like actual true job, to pursue like personal training and coaching full time, which obviously the gym based too. That might be that might be like the first thing to shut down. So now like what if that shuts down, bro? Like I've been thinking too is like, like what am I gonna do? You know. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to adapt here and figure it out. Like I'm probably gonna have to go to like 
house appointments and shit, you know? Yeah. So I'm gonna figure it out because like now, like even if it shuts down, I won't. I probably won't get like unemployment. Mm-hmm. But like you're gonna have to figure shit out too because shit's gonna happen regardless, you know? Yeah. That's tough, bro. Especially now at times too. Like, that's not just me. That's like, I guess I consider myself like a a business owner because I do my own thing. Mm-hmm. No matter how small, like if you run a business, you run a business, you know? Yeah. But that's like a lot of like small business, bro. Like I've been fortunate enough, like I had some money saved where I'm good right now. But like, bro, you saw like how many businesses like shut down and closed due to like quarantine and COVID and shit. It's crazy. The only ones that have made it this far is ones that were able to truly like adapt and like meet the needs of the publics. Mm-hmm. The rest that couldn't, bro. Like that's our whole life. It's like ruined, you know? Yeah, that's tough. I mean that. That literally, I feel like life is such a simple but difficult concept. Because at the end of the day, like in order for yourself to be happy, you control what you can, what you can control, and you basically learn off your failures. Yeah. But it's such an easy thing to say and such a hard thing to do. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things that we can't control that affect our lives drastically. Yeah. And people they shut down. Yeah. But there's different ways to go about having success. That's why, like, I listen to a business podcast and he literally talks about taking every single opportunity that comes to you yeah. like at the end of the day you have your end goal yeah but you're not going to say no to opportunity that comes to you when you're 22 because the end goal you want when you're 35 yeah it's like no you take the opportunity because nothing's wrong with having multiple forms of income yeah nothing wrong with nothing wrong at all but we just talked about that before we started yeah yeah like like literally if someone offers you an opportunity don't have such a one-track mind, but oh no, have you reached this goal? Yeah. That you don't even look into it. No, like you don't know what's gonna happen in the next year. You yeah. don't know what's gonna go on. You like you don't know when, so, like something's gonna happen to where you lose a lot of money, and then you only have this one goal you've been working towards and putting all your money into that. Yeah. You haven't invested or you haven't looked into different forms of income, and now you're broke. Your goals, like your goals, shattered. You don't know where to go because plan A, B, C, D, all those plans failed. Yeah. And now you're just sitting here like, what do I do? Yeah. And that's where it comes down to adapting. That's where it comes down to having a creative mind. That's where it comes down to connecting back, the dots. It comes back to having that dog mentality, like, hey, and I'm have, gonna figure shit out. Yeah, it's know? because no matter what happens, you're gonna find a way to do yeah. what you want to do. You know? I've, I've been through. I fail every single day. I've been through so oh, many. Yeah. I've been through so, so many things where I've messed up. Yeah. But. There's not one time where I've messed up and be like, okay, don't worry about it. Yeah. No, I would sit there, I think about it, I do all about it, I learn from it, and you best believe I might do that I might do that once, but I'm not gonna make the same mistake again because I don't wanna go back to where I was. Yeah. Because I wanna keep moving forward. Because there's no reason in life to where you should be going forward and back when age is linger. Yeah. Like if age is linger, like literally you if you have a progression, there should be a point to where, yeah, you're gonna drop off, but you shouldn't be back to where you, you yeah. were at the beginning because you should have more knowledge. Yeah, you should, yeah, yeah. You should learn from it. So it's like you bounce back quicker. Yeah, I think that comes down to like, like we said too, like you're inevitably gonna fail. Like, yeah. I, do, I fail every day. Like, I do stupid shit every day. Be ready to fail. Example, I'm gonna, I don't wanna say this on here, but I'm gonna say it too. So, uh, as personal training too, like, I just started. So, whatever. We had, <laughs> dude, I was talking about the group training class. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So our first group training class, I was like, dude, like I talked to this other trainer. I was like, hey, like, let's do a group training class. You know, like all these other commercial gyms do it. It might be fun, you know? So for like the week we advertised it, we pushed it. It was pretty cheap. Like, yeah, like we're gonna have like 15, 20 people come out. <laughs> dude, I, it came to the time, it was like at 9 a.m. It was like 9.05, no one's there. You know, I was like, oh, well, maybe they're late. 9.15, 9.20, 9.30, nobody showed day one. You know how, you know how, that was such a big L. You know how bad I kind of mm-hmm. like, because everybody was asking me, like, hey, like, because all the friends knew what they were doing. They're like, hey, how'd the group training class go? How'd it go? How'd it go? They all asked me, I was like, and I lied. I was like, dude, like, you know what? It went well. Like, oh, where's the video that? Can I see? And I was like, no, I got too busy. I didn't have time to take a video, you know? Totally lied. So if you're watching this and I lied to you, I'm sorry. I just couldn't, couldn't tell you the truth. The second one went good, though. But if I would have like just embrace that failure, be like, dude, like this, like this sucks. You know, no one's gonna come. Mm-hmm. The second day, the second time we did it, we had fifteen people. Granted, the third time yesterday it was like four people. But you know what? Progress isn't always linear, too. You know. Dude, there's Don't sometimes, there's sometimes you just gotta lap it off, man. Yeah, that shit hurt, and I lapped it off. It's like, dude, you know what? They're lost. I'll try again next week, 
and they went better. Dude, you know how many days I show up to work at 5.30 in the morning? Yeah. And I have a client not show up? Dude. I don't know. Never mind. Like, 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 I mean, at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, I'm already up. Yeah. So I got my day started early. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Dude, this chair is going to kill me. So like I was saying, too. Um, yeah, so I don't have too many clients now. I have enough to, to get by, you mm -hmm. know? Not where I want. But obviously, like, we're still growing, too. But I had a few that just, like, my first, like, initial clients, like, maybe I didn't do a good job. Maybe they weren't feeling it, too. Whatever. That ended how it ended, too. And it kind of sucks, you know? It's like, dude, like, it kind of feels like a, like, a, it feels like it sucks, you know? Like, damn, like, my first couple clients, they never came back. Mate, what did I do wrong? But you got to take it, like, with a grain of salt, like you said, too. I was like, mm -hmm. maybe it's them, maybe it's me. I don't know. What did I learn from this? What did I do good? What did I do wrong? What should I improve on? Mm -hmm. And just keep constantly applying that to it. Yep. Because you're, you're always going to fuck up. Like you're going to do something wrong. You're going to think back, like, damn, I should have done this. I should have done this better, you know? Mm -hmm. But as long as you learn and figure out, like, hey, like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have done this instead. Acted this way. Said this. Said that. And just keep learning from that. Mm -hmm. You'll eventually get there. Because you're never going to do, like, the first thing right the first time. Yeah. No. You never. Know? You know how many times I have, I, dude, I fucked up shit. The same stuff so many times, you know? Mm -hmm. It takes a point. Like, you're going to you're gonna keep making the same mistake until you learn. That's fine. That might take one time. It might take two. It might take ten, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, figure out what you did wrong. That's not only, like, business. That's, like, lifting, life, like, whatever, you know? Like, like relationships, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's easy to blame the person in relationships, too. But I, obviously, you're both wrong, like, you know? Yeah. Like, I can look back now, like, dude, I did this, this, this wrong. Mm -hmm. I should do this next time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so you got you gotta really like look at it from like a logical like not emotional, but hey, like, what can I have done better? Figure that out and always apply that to the next people you come across with too. Because mm -hmm. like dude, like like I, the last thing I wanna do, like, especially like you and like other like programming clients too, I'm like, hey, like maybe on here I should have done this differently or this, because you always wanna start like overthinking too. But as long as you just try to like fix it and make it better for the next go around, then you win, you know? I mean, yeah, you gotta practice everything. I mean, yeah. everybody said, so people, they say practice makes perfect, but that's false because nothing's perfect. But I think... It makes consistent. I think perfect practice makes permanent. Because if you do something enough, it will become second nature and become permanent in what you do. So, like, in motor behavior, like, if we're talking about, like, actual, like, cognitive motor behavior and how, how your moves. body moves, yeah. if you write right-handed and you do that over and over and over again... Yeah. You're gonna permanently get good at it. Same thing with left hand because there's there's like bilateral movements by by manual and everything. Yeah. If you write if you write righty, let's say you break your right hand, you can start writing lefty. And if you do that every single day, yeah, it'll get better and better. Yeah. And at some point, you'll be able to write just as good as your right hand. Now I don't know if it's gonna take a month. I don't know if it's gonna take a year. But if you do it consistently and you basically learn from your mistakes. You figure out, you adapt, and you basically switch things around. Yeah. In order to mold, in order to match what you want to do. Yeah. At some point, you get pretty dang good at it. Yeah. And like, if any trainer that's, if you look at like the good, like the good trainers, like like Dave Tate, everybody that's like in the older ages, if they look back at the videos that they made when they were twenty one, or the people that they like the stuff they said to the people that they trained when they were twenty three. Yeah. It's totally different mindset than when they're forty five and they're fifty because they've done that before they worked through it they figured out oh that doesn't work but i'm gonna do this so it's like the same thing with science i mean science change textbooks change every three or four years it's like you discover a new thing you thought you knew something but like, oh no, hold up wait maybe this is that and then next thing you know new textbook is out with totally different information than it was 10 years ago like people that are in school 20 years ago know something totally different than what we know now because textbooks changes science change things change you figure out through error yeah. trial and error and it's like people they just don't understand that and they think if they fail then they have nothing else to do because yeah. they're so one track and they're like okay well i can't make it to this goal unless i take this step no you can skip that step you don't have to take these classes in order to go into this maybe if you have a good interview maybe you if you have a, have a lot of contact hours maybe if you do this maybe you do that they'll give you a chance because you have that drive not not saying don't go to not saying don't take those classes because oh i'm just gonna interview well not saying that yeah. But don't just give up just because you're missing a step. You can skip a couple steps. I mean, yeah. when I walk up the stairs, I don't hit every single step there. You can skip a couple steps. You can trip down a step. You can get back up. 
but just don't dwell on that one step you're missing. Yeah. Like don't stand on the stairs and stare, stand at that step because oh it's gone. No, there's one one foot one foot above it. Yeah, I think I agree with that hundred percent. I think um, it's definitely learning curve. Like no matter what you do, like you're always gonna learn as you do it. And I think the big thing is, I know I'm guilty of this. I know most people are too. But you try to get so focused and like coming up with like a plan and a perfect way to do something mm-hmm. that you procrastinate actually doing it too. When in reality, the best thing is to actually do it and learn as you go, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, same with lifting, same with, like, business. Like, dude, like... Jump I'm, in it, bro. Yeah, like, I know, like, most, like, most, like, business people I follow who, like, do, like, podcasts, talk about stuff, too, they say the same thing. It's like, hey, like, you need to, like, just start it. Just go start and yeah. then just start learning the way, too. Because, like, dude, like, when I started doing business, like, I guess I say mine's business, but it's so small and, like, it's personal training, no, you know? it's a business. So, so like, dude, like, I don't, I don't know how to do any of that. I, I don't know any of the books. I don't know how, like... I don't know how any of this stuff works, you know? Mm. But you slowly start, like, learning as you're doing it, too, you know? Yeah. Because you... I'm going to quote another guy. Because I like... Big quote guy. Go. Go for it. I'm going to totally butcher this one. But a perfect plan executed tomorrow is not as good as a average plan executed today. Maybe the quote doesn't fit. I, I get. Know. I get. But what you know what I'm saying? saying. Like, just, just go like, into it. Just, yeah. just do it. That's like the first step, too. Just you gotta do it. And that seems so simple, too. But like, it's with anything, too. Like, like bro, like, example, like a relationship, too. You meet a new, like, you're trying to like meet a new girl, try to talk to her, too. You know, you're sitting there thinking, oh, how do I talk to this girl? What do I say? You know, you just, just fucking do it. See yeah. where it goes. You know. I mean, you're not gonna get anywhere if you don't do anything. Oh, 100 percent, too. Like. You know, like, if we're talking about girls, I mean, you see a girl, you see a girl somewhere, you might not ever see her again. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. all right, who's like, all right, am I gonna make this? Am jump? I gonna send it or not, dude? Yeah. You know? I mean, the worst that's gonna happen is no. Yeah. You know, guys, if you're listening to this, hey, man, just I mean, talk to her. Be rude. <laughs> I mean, sorry, don't be rude. Don't, don't be, be rude. <laughs> He's a dick. No, I'm not. <laughs> be respectful. I don't know why I said rude. I said I meant to say, don't be rude. Be respectful. Be nice. Just shoot your shot. But hey, I'm Brandon Dudley. I mean, why do you have to? Get me? I mean. You never know unless you try. Like you never know. You always know unless you say it. Unless you try. Yeah, like like, like you never like you never know if you could be able to start that business unless you make that jump. Unless you ask for that loan. Everybody feels the that. same way too, bro. Yeah. Cause, cause everybody does. And it's like it's like the, people still now. Like, it's, it's, it's like the pre marriage jitters. Like everybody talks about that. It's like okay, like you're like let's say you're getting married, whatever, and every, it's like oh my gosh, like I'm gonna be this person the rest of my life. Or it's like I'll it's, be scared too. Or, yeah. or, so, or someone's like, I want to start a business, but, like, but oh my gosh, this might flop. It might be broke. But it's oh, like, yeah. but, it's like, you know. but it's like, hey man, it might flop. It might be broke, or you might get this loan. You might start it off. Your personality might carry on, and then it become being a big business. Ooh. And now, and now you now you have money. That would trans that would transition to the next topic of like perspective too. What you're gonna say? Yeah, it's how you see it. I don't know if we have time for perspective. But I had, I think about five ten minutes left. Then I gotta go. Yeah, but well, this would be quick because we basically talked about the majority of I guess, it already. I guess perspective goes into like everything else we talked about, like the people you're around, your mindset, dealing with failure too. Mm-hmm. You gotta always keep that positive perspective, and that is that's tough, bro. Yeah, especially in the times where everybody's like unemployed, losing their house, businesses and stuff too. You just gotta just keep on keeping yeah. on. You know, just gotta always go forward. That's and, tough. And there's always extremes because when we say when we say jump. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Like, don't make a stupid jump. You'd be like, oh, I don't know anything about this. It's relative. No, yeah, I, I don't know anything about this. Two dollars in my bank account. You know, whatever happens, happens. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna start this business. No, dude, do your research. What do you mean like, 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 do your research. Like, try to figure it out before you jump. Yeah. But then once you have it figured out, don't double think. Yeah. Like, that's so. Once you figure it out, make that jump. So instead of sitting there, and not having the knowledge and making the jump versus having so much knowledge that you overthink it and don't make the jump meet yeah. somewhere in the middle like if you have an idea look into it you know do your research and, and then once you do your research and you figure it out this is what you want to do don't be afraid to make that jump yeah so think, that's what you should be i think it'll be place. like you, like i think when you're going to start something new you have to come from like from like a dumb mindset too you know you don't because if you start like overthinking it yeah happy go lucky you get paralyzed you know <laughs> yeah you need to like just like go like just zone out and just be like, like you know what I'm gonna do it too. Yeah. It's only like a big lift. Like, I'm gonna go for like a PR, like 700 pounds, you know? Yeah. I'm not gonna sit there and overthink it. I'm just gonna just go dumb and just try to do it, you know? That's why I don't ha- That's why I do not do half jumps. Yeah. <laughs> I what say, hey. says 225, 
Six seventy five. Let's go. Hey, right now, right you, now. Do, you do the bar. You do one plate, and you just hop to whatever your top set is. Yeah. <laughs> don't hey, do that. Don't do at that. At least I did my bird dog, so I'm good to go. That's the joke. Don't do that. He's but, not joking. <laughs> bench one thirty five. <laughs> That's because I always bench like two twenty five. <laughs> but but to end this off, just make sure. So I'm I'll gonna so, so I'm gonna summarize this. Okay. I guess. Oh. I'll, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> so summarize this. Surround yourself with good people. Boom. People that want you to see you succeed. People that challenge you. People that challenge you. People yes. that will always keep you up to your word. Two. Also, make sure the people you're with will tell you the truth too. That's a big thing too. Yeah. If you go, if you're around people that are just like yes men, just trying to tell you what you want to hear, you're never going anywhere. You need people that can actually challenge you, like yeah. you said, and tell you the truth. Like if you're wrong, like if you're doing stuff wrong, how you could do it better, they're gonna tell you the actual truth. I forgot to say that earlier in the podcast too. Okay. All right, sorry. Keep summarizing. Go back to summarize. Surround yourself with good people. Yeah. Surround yourself with people that want to see you succeed. Big facts. Don't be don't be afraid to fail, but make sure you learn from your failures. Big facts. And don't be afraid to jump. Bigger facts. Thank you for tuning in to another Sunday. Also, now. before we go, next Saturday, I guess I'll go the outro too. Okay. I, guess, I don't have. I guess like us and leave us a review on Apple Podcast. I guess you can do that on SoundCloud too. Where's Spotify? Spotify. Sorry. Uh, YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Yes, like, comment, subscribe. And we'll be back next Sunday with our first ever guest. Maybe some brewskis? We'll see. Thank you for tuning in to Sunday Sit Down. Nice. That was good. Yep. I like that. That was fun. Uh, save project. Save project. Yes. Oh, I gotta go to freaking Okay. If she canceled again, I would lose it. <laughs> I think that was a good episode. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't say anything controversial, did we? No. Oh, can you stop the camera? Yeah. Hold on a second.